Well, hello and good day. My name's Nate, and I'm going to be giving you the crash course on sculpting stylized hair in ZBrush. In this tutorial, I'll only be covering how to make a breakdown, sculpt hair in ZBrush, and add basic poly paint. For further steps, such as blocking out in Maya and rendering in RenderMan, I'd highly recommend checking out some other, more professional YouTube videos that cover those topics. In this tutorial, I'll be covering the much thicker and like, you know, slightly blocky style of hair that you'd see in a Pokemon game or Overwatch, but with less of the finer detail. This is probably one of the easiest styles to cover, so it's probably the best introduction for this topic. With that being said, let's make some stylized hair. There is a bit of work that needs to be done before opening ZBrush, and before I begin, I should mention that I'll be running through this whole process while using a reference. I've dropped the same image that I'll be using in the description below. So if you want, you can download it and follow along. I'm using this anime waitress character because I can see some clear shapes in the hair that would be good for modeling in 3D. To start, we're going to make a breakdown. Breakdowns are super useful when creating stylized hair from a reference, and they're super easy to make. You want to start by opening any drawing software you may have that lets you import images and use layers. Sorry Microsoft Paint. For this tutorial, I'll be using Critter because it's free to install and use. Open up a new drawing project and import your image. Just make sure to import it as a new layer. Then scale up the image to fit the canvas, create a new paint layer, drag the paint layer above your image, and select it. Draw a big blob over a segment of hair that looks separate from the rest. For example, this fringe looks like it could be a separate piece in the model, and this strand could be on its own too. The hairline is a really good reference point for this. Oh, and don't worry about any of these extra thin strands. Make sure you create a new paint layer and use different colors for each different blob you draw. I find color coding to be really good at making things easy to understand. Just keep doing this till you've done all the hair. Once you've finished, you can turn down the opacity on each of your layers to about 40%, and if you really want to go the extra mile, you can try erasing some of the excess on each blob to line up those edges. By the end, you should have something that looks like this. Export the file as a JPEG and save it to a place you can find later. Also, if you're really struggling with the breakdown process, I've dropped my finished image into the description too. Righty yo, we're almost ready to bust open ZBrush. But first you want to make sure that you can easily reference your breakdown while working. If you only have one monitor, or even if you have two, I'd highly recommend using an application called PureRef. PureRef can be downloaded and installed for free, and it's super easy to use. All you have to do is open it up, hit Control shift a and that'll set it to always on top mode, and you're ready to roll. Drag in the breakdown you just made, scale it and the canvas to size, and once you're satisfied, right click drag it to the side of your ZBrush display window. Alright, in your empty display window, hit the comma on your keyboard, and that'll bring up a bunch of preset brushes and scenes. Select this demo anime head and double click it to open. This is what we'll be using as the bust for our hair. I'm going to assume you know the core basics of ZBrush, such as looking around, zooming in, and changing your brush size. If you don't, I definitely check a beginner's tutorial or Google the controls before watching this video. Come down to your brushes here on the bottom and double click on a brush you won't be using, such as blob or elastic. This will bring up a list of every default brush, and you want to select the curved tube brush. Change your draw size to a decent number like 65, and then you can draw a really rough line to represent one of the blobs in your breakdown. Keep in mind that only the direction matters, so don't be an artist and draw out the literal shape of the blob, that'll just be a mess. You should have this thick tube clipping through your mesh at the end. Next up, you gotta go to the subtool menu to the left, select the head, and go down to the split tab, and then hit split to parts. The tube should be a separate subtool now, and we can start moving it into the right position and shape. With the tube selected, use the move tool to kind of, you know, push it into position on the head. And when you're satisfied with that, close the subtool menu and open up geometry. Go down to Dynamesh, set the resolution to roughly 80, and hit the Dynamesh button. You can also hit Shift F to check the wireframe. With this, you can see the geometry is much more dense and malleable, and this is where some thorough sculpting comes in, using ZBrush's core brushes. The core brushes are Move, Smooth, Inflate, and Pinch. Using these brushes, start pushing around, inflating, and deflating the tube to match the rough shape of the hair blob in the breakdown. You can also re mesh if the geometry is getting too difficult or unmanageable to work with. Also, keep in mind, we only need the size, position, and depth of the strand, so remember to keep it simple. After you finish your first strand, repeat the whole process starting from the curved tube brush for the next strand. 
You'll probably notice while doing this that some of the extra large or wide blobs from your breakdown could probably be split into two or more strands. And the simple solution to that is to make your strand half as wide as your breakdown suggests, sort of like what I'm doing on screen. Then all you have to do is duplicate it and move it to the side. Be sure to give it some variation though so it doesn't look like a direct copy and just looks more natural. You can repeat this process as many times as you think is necessary for the wider segments. One extra thing I like to do is to reorganize my strands in the subtool menu to be in order so that I can select them in a linear way. This will make things easier later. Eventually, you should have some chunky hair that looks similar to this. Once you're happy with your result, go back to the subtool menu and select your first strand of hair. Then go to geometry, down to Z remesher, set the target polygon count to roughly 0.5 and hit Z remesher. Once it finishes loading, you should see the geometry has become a lot more even and uniform. Lastly, go up to the divide button and hit it three times. You need to do the whole remeshing process for each strand of hair. It gets a little tedious, but it'll save time later. Once you finish that, we're ready to add some poly paint. Similar to the breakdown helping with the basic shapes, adding some basic color to your mesh will really help in visualizing the final product and nailing down those finer details for your hair. To set up polypaint, go to the subtool menu and select your first strand of hair. Then you go up to the color menu up in the top left, go to the bottom of the palette, and select the fill object button. Doing this will create a paint layer for your object. Do this for all the other strands and the head too. Going back to pure ref, you can now drag in the original reference image without the blobs, and we're going to use it for color reference. You'll notice she has a bit of a fade from a light gray to a sort of paley blue color. So to emulate this, I'm going to start by filling the hair strand with just the blue from the bottom. Just drag the sliders in the color palette and try to match the color the best you can using that little window at the top. And once you're done, hit fill object. Next I'm going to select my standard brush from the brushes menu. Up here beneath the color tab, turn off Z add and turn on RGB. In the color menu, try to match the light gray from the top of her hair, but instead of hitting fill object when you're done, Increase your draw size to like 460 or something big, and carefully paint the top of the strand. You should end up with a bit of a rough fade. It doesn't have to be perfect though, and you can play around with the draw size and focal shift to adjust it if you want. Once you're happy with the color of your strand, move on to the next one. In the color menu, you can actually drag the main slider outside of the palette onto any part of the screen and it'll pick that color for you. This means we can drag it down to our colored hair strand and perfectly replicate the color at the bottom. The process for colouring the rest of the strands is the same as the first one, but instead of manually using the sliders to replicate the colours on the image, you can use the colour picker to grab the bottom and the top. Also if you wanted to, you could colour in the head. Alright, next up is the finer details. For the style I'm doing, the only brushes you'll need are still the cores, but not as much smoothing, and you'll need the damn standard brush. You could also use the standard brush for some extra depth but just make sure you switch back to Z add and turn off RGB. Before you start, it's also good to keep in mind to try and work in lower subdivision levels when you can, especially if you're making bigger changes. You can adjust the division level in the geometry menu above the divide button. I find a good number to work with is usually two or three. The most important thing when adding details to hair is to keep a relatively consistent flow. So unless you're sculpting something super complex like braids or extra curly hair, you just about never draw a cut or pinch sideways. To keep things similar, try following your strokes from the top of the head to the tip of the strand, but a little variation could be good. Just follow the reference when you can, and one other detail to remember is to avoid clipping as much as possible. This kind of goes back to keeping a consistent flow, but hair going through itself is especially noticeable on a stylized model. In the end, just try to keep it simple and recognizable. Stylized almost always looks far simpler than reality, so if you have a relatively blocky strand like this one, don't stress. Just add an extra cut if you think it's necessary. Spoiler alert, it probably isn't. Okay, I think this is looking quite good. And that brings us to our final step, which is adding those extra thin strands that we didn't put in our breakdown. The whole process of adding these is pretty much identical to the bigger strands, but even simpler. Select the curve tube brush again, turn down your draw size to like a 10 or a 9, select the head in the subtool menu, and draw some mini strands that follow the reference. Don't forget to keep a consistent flow as well. Split each strand into its own subtool, and dynamesh, zero mesh, and divide them all. 
You can definitely duplicate some strands to make adding extra easier, but just remember to keep some variation like we mentioned earlier. You don't need to add any finer detail to these strands, but still use the core brushes to push them all into just the right position with the reference. And once you're satisfied with that, add poly paint using the same process from earlier. And with all that, you're finished. But that doesn't mean you have to stop. I've only covered the basics of making stylized hair, but there's still tons more you can do. For example, you can put all of the strands into a folder in the subtool menu, duplicate that folder, and then merge all of those strands to make a single mesh, which will make it easier to add poly paint details and highlights. Another more ambitious example would be adding even more geometry to complete the face. You could add eyes and eyelashes and poly paint those too. But with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. It was a lot of fun to make, and I hope I've set you in the right direction to create some amazing artworks. That's all I've got for now though, and until next time, have a good one.